Thank you very much. So yesterday you heard from two different sources that uh, Trisky proved uh, local uniformization in 1940 uh, in characteristic zero. So what about now in positive characteristic? What can we do? First, the definition, a place is P is called a place, obviously, when the associated valuation is an Apianka valuation. Okay, and um, so we saw in part 5.2 uh, that the generalized stability theorem implies that every um, every Apianka valuation on a function field uh, is inertially generated. That means, okay, Apianka places admit what I called elimination of ramification. So I said, I said that is one part towards local uniformization. And in the Apianka case, we actually know quite well what is missing. What you have to do is do the Perron algorithm. I will not go into details here. on rational function fields with Apianka valuation. And then you obtain a theorem. And that was proved together with my collaborator Hagen Knaf, and that was, I think it was in 2005. And this uh, theorem says that every Apianka place on a function field f over k with the Single one little assumption that fp over k is separable. That is actually something that follows from local uniformization, so we need to ask for it. Admits local uniformization. Okay, so, but we know there is, there are places that are not Apianka. So what about what I call the mixed case? And that was 5.3. But note one thing. Uh, so it's a result that I proved in 2005. The Apianka places lie dense in the space of all places. Places of an algebraic function field. And uh, Dense with respect to what? So Mark mentioned already yesterday that on this space you have the so-called uh, Tsarisky topology. But actually, this density holds in much stronger topologies. From the Tsarisky topology, you can go to a patch topology. 
And even more, so you can actually, when you approximate a place, you can preserve a lot of information. When I told that to Apianka, I met him in 1997, I told him about this result, and then she said, oh, then you got local uniformization. Just approximate the bad guys, and we know, yeah, this local uniformization is an open, uh, open assertion, open condition, so approximate the bad ones by good ones, and you will catch the bad ones. Unfortunately, okay, that this condition, local uniformization, is open, doesn't mean that you catch the bad guys, because, so to say, the radius of, uh, of this open set could shrink as you approach a bad place. Radius of uh, such local uniformization is something fuzzy. We don't know what it is. If we could do the whole thing by keeping up this, so to say, radius, uh, maybe then we could do local uniformization. So that's something to, to think about. Um, and uh, But so far, this idea has not led to anything. So Apianka's enthusiasm was nice, but unfortunately misguided. <laughs> okay, so what can else can we do? This is now chapter seven. Tame fields. And Hanselian rationality. So I talked already about Hanselian rationality. Let's see what we can do in that direction. And remember, Hanselian rationality came up in this case one under five, where we looked at immediate function fields. Okay, and tame fields, uh, okay, that is a notion that I defined in uh, my thesis with the help of my supervisor, Rocket. So it's actually, we came up with this notion together. Definition, a Hanselian field KV is tame if it's Absolute ramification field is algebraically closed. Okay, I mentioned that already because it appears when you have residue characteristic zero and then your life is much easier because you only have time ramification. Um, but this is sort of not so, well, you probably don't make much of it. So let me make it much clearer by citing a theorem, um, Hanselian or Hanselian field AV is tame if for every finite extension L over KV, and remember, because it's Hanselian, the extension of the valuation is unique, and then we have two, uh, we have three conditions on this extension. First condition that VL modulo VK is not, uh, no, that's not what I mean. I mean the index is not divisible by the residue characteristic what would be the analog for the residue field extension it is separable and finally the extension should be defectless So the degree is equal to E times F. Okay, these are tame fields. So you see that the extensions are very nice of tame fields. 
And um, all time fields are are perfect and defectless. Well, there it is. And uh, examples for time fields are all Hanselian fields with characteristic KV is zero. Our time fields and all, so a nice way to immediately get the time field in positive characteristic and all perfect and zillion fields of positive characteristic. So in mixed characteristic, where the field has characteristic zero residue field, has uh, characteristic P, there are also nice conditions, but it's a bit harder to write down. So, uh, in any case, the construction of time fields is easy. And for these fields, we have a theory. Now, this, like the generalized stability theorem, yes, okay, I proved it in my thesis. It appeared in print much later, sorry for that. Um, and uh, I'm not daring to, to write a, a, a year for this. So it appeared in my thesis. And then what happened was that Yuri Yershov had a gap in my proof for mixed characteristic. And he wrote a paper. Well, he didn't tell me anything just sent me the paper, and then I looked at that paper, and these, these English translations of algebra e logica are horrible, and I, I couldn't make sense of that. But later I found, I made my way through, I improved his proof, and now the proof is complete for the Hanselian rationality theorem. <coughs> So, every immediate function field, immediate you know, uh, value group and residue field remain the same. Function field of transcendence degree 1 over a tame field. is Hanselian rational. So remember, when you remember the, the case one in chapter five, um, uh, the problem was to find an x, so that f is lies in kx Henselized. And in this case here, you have to work very hard. And the proof is quite involved. Okay, now there is actually even a version, you can relax a little bit, new conditions. Separably tame. If this holds for every, um, yeah, if this holds for k sep, and here you have separably tame if and only if for every finite separable extension. Okay, same for over separably tame fields. Did I mention K here? No. I should. Um, so, F over K. Separably tame K if F over K is separable. Okay. 
Okay, so later, if I have enough time, I will come back to tame fields because tame fields is a class of uh, valued fields that has nice model theory. And actually, it's representative for the model theory of all perfect valued fields. Okay, now back to local uniformization and back to the white chalk. Chapter 8, local uniformization by alteration. And I indicated already in uh, uh, Chapter 5 that the mixed case, for the mixed case, we have to enlarge things and possibly the function field. So what this means is that we get local uniformization the finite extension of the function field. It's certainly not what we want to have, but it's an approximation. Um, so, going back to the diagram that we had in case three of chapter five. So, remember we had F, the function field, and then we had a rational function field in between uh, which we uh, constructed by a good choice of uh, a transcendence basis, you know, by lifting transcendence basis of the residue field extension and, so to say, transcendence basis of the value group extension. We got this F0, but as it's the mixed case, here the transcendence degree is still big or equal to 1. And this problem now we have to solve. And I said, okay, so. What we have in mind is coming back to case one, where the function field is immediate. But that is not a priori so. Here it's not immediate, and then also we have to slice into pieces of transcendence degree one. Okay, now what we really do is we, we show that there are hulls that are separably tame, minimal extensions that are separably tame. and Hensilian, and we work with this extension. And then we can do the whole thing. But you know, this certainly, if we have to do it, it's an infinite extension. However, if you can do local uniformization in this situation, you pick up just finitely elements that you need to write down that you have local uniformization. So that means in the end, you will only need a finite extension. and we'll, you will have local uniformization there. But you need this finite extension. Okay, we have not found any way around it. And so this leads to the following theorem. Which again I proved with Hagen. And Hagen is actually a much more better commutative algebraist than I am, so we, uh, he is a very good addition to, to me, and he is in the whole thing, actually came in uh, to do these theorems also in the case of arithmetic algebraic geometry, so mixed characteristic, but I'm not formulating that result. And this is 2009. Okay, so every place, not only the Apianka places, again we have to ask the separability condition. admits, yeah, let's say for every place, there is a finite extension well, we extend the place P to place P prime 
such that P prime admits local uniformization. And we have the following additional information. We have that the index Vp prime of F prime in this Vp of F is divisible by the residue characteristic. Yeah, characteristic Kp, let's say. And the residue field extension, so that's F prime P prime over FP, is purely inseparable. Okay, if you're in characteristic P and you know you, there is damage, that's the minimal damage that you want to accept. Or, unfortunately, not both together, B, F prime over F is Galois. Now, the mere result here is a special case of de Jong's resolution by alteration. But here you have additional information. First of all, this information, well, I mean, this is, makes no sense if you are talking about resolution, but if you fix a valuation, if you fix a place, then you can have this, uh, this information. On the other hand, De Jong is not able to do the Galois. So we are able to, to do the whole thing by a Galois extension. Okay, now as we talked about tame fields, let me come to the model theory of tame fields. And this is actually, this endeavor was actually the one that I came from. I started my thesis uh, to investigate the model theory of this guy, FPT, that I mentioned before. Um, and then I was very surprised to find out that the stability theorem and uh, the Henselian rationality theorem that I proved in my thesis are also applicable to local uniformization. And that's a nice thing because it shows that you have two very different, very tough problems that have the same core, namely the structure theory of valued fields, and uh, the same culprit, the same enemy, the defect. So, model theory, I will quickly try to give you an idea of what this is about. Okay, and why? Why is there this common core of the structure theory of function fields? The basic tool for proving model theoretic um, results, well, at least in the school where I come from, that's the Prestel Roquette School, basic tool are embedding lemmas. But not in the sense of color theory, I will show you what I mean. Ding, lemmas. And so, well, Robinson gave us the model theory of algebraically closed valued fields. Uh, everything is fine. But when you go away, like for instance, Henselian fields of ca uh, residue characteristic zero done by x coaching, then everything is done relative to a value group and the residue field. And that means you have the following situation. You have a function field, f over k, with a valuation. Yeah. So in model theory, you have tricks to reduce whatever you want to do to finitely generated extensions. And these are function fields, algebraic function fields. And now you have the following situation. 
you look at the value groups, and you have some very ominous extension here, which we write as k star. The model theory says this is a highly saturated elementary extension of k. Okay, forget about it. Uh, only rem uh, remember that this is a very, very rich valued field. And, uh, and you have, by assumption, you have an embedding here. Same for the residue fields, Fv over Kv, and you have this residue field of K star V, and you have an embedding here. You have these two, and what you want to find is an embedding of the valued fields. So here you have Kv. So you want to have a valuation preserving embedding of F into this K star. That's the embedding problem. So you want to somehow lift these embeddings to an embedding of the valued field. And that is indeed is easy to do if, you, if your F is this F0 that we had before, on which we have an Apianka valuation. So in that case, then you just lift the embeddings. Yeah, you, you know where V of X1 to V of XR go, you know where the residues of Y1 to Ys go, you lift that up and you're done. So that is easy. But what, what for the remaining extension? So, well, if you're in the Apianka case, f over f0 is algebraic. So how do we handle this algebraic case? Um, you started with a Hensielian field here, then because this is an elementary extension, this is also Hensielian. So you can hens use Hensel's lemma, but you have no other tool. And I told you that you can use Hensel's lemma if the function field is inertially generated. You have to get rid of ramification. And this we can do for Herpjanka uh, valuations, and so the whole thing gives you the solution, the embedding for in the Apianka case. Now, the opposite case, immediate extensions, So suppose that now this is not algebraic, but is immediate, for instance. For immediate extensions, I just want to mention this because it's one of the really great works in valuation theory, one of the celebrated papers. If everything is okay, you have to usually reduce to this case. Uh, use uh, Kaplansky's. So Kaplansky wrote a paper, Maximum Field with Valuations, and he introduced what is now often called pseudo-Cauchy sequences. Yes, uh, so I mean, the wonderful paper is Kaplansky, but he took a lot from Ostrovsky. So that's true. Yeah. Yes, yes. No. Uh, so the, uh, the pseudo Cauchy sequences appear already were introduced by Ostrovsky. And as an aside, so Mark didn't tell that yesterday, but one big business now, since, since many, many decades actually, is to describe all extensions of evaluation from a field to a rational function field. And when Ostrovsky wrote his paper, People at that time reacted, oh, this problem is solved for once and for all. But we know it's not solved. There are so many other questions to, uh, to ask. So this, this is a big subject, still ongoing. Okay, so...
Now, when you take the stability theorem and the Hanselian rationality theorem together, then you can prove the following theorem. Again, proved what it modulo the gap in the Hanselian rationality theorem, proved in my thesis, appeared in print in Krelle in 2016. So we take a tame field. Then we have, and I will not go into details here, just give you a hint. I mentioned that already in the very beginning, that we have a good model theory for tame fields. And I mentioned decidability. And that refers to the so-called elementary, or so others know it as first order theory is decidable and it is model complete if the theories again elementary theories of VK and KV are Now, first order or elementary means that you have certain language, so you have for field plus, minus, times, uh, and uh, for valued field you add a predicate for the valuation ring, and uh, then the uh, sentences you are allowed to form are using quantification, but only over elements of the field, not over subsets. So you cannot express, for instance, that a valued field is com uh, complete. That's second order. But elementary does not mean that, uh, that it's elementary, that it's uh, easy. So for instance, Fermat's last theorem is elementary. But the proof is not. <laughs> OK. And uh, so I said for valued fields, you have the language of rings together with uh, a predicate for the valuation. For residue fields, just the language of rings. And for the valued group, the language of ordered groups. So group language, you have only plus and minus. Uh, you have a constant zero. And you have uh, a predicate for the order. OK, now I want to give you a little bit more of an impression of what, what this means uh, by saying that if the characteristic of K, so the, we call that the equal characteristic case, the mixed characteristic case is not solved here. And there are counterexamples that a naive translation of the of the result is, is not true. So we are now looking for criteria when it is true. Then, and we call that an ex coach nershoff principle. And this one relates to elementary equivalence. This is the sign for elementary equivalence principle holds. And elementary equivalence can be thought of in terms of transfer principles. And probably the best known as an example is Tarski's transfer principle. If you take the reals as an ordered field, it is elementarily equivalent to every real closed field. Take any real closed field, 
meaning a field, for instance, that you can describe that by saying that the absolute Galois group is uh, it's the group with two elements. Then these two fields are elementarily equivalent. So you can prove something in the reals, and you know something that is elementary, and you know it holds in all real class fields. Or sometimes we go the other way, because we can take a highly saturated real closed field, this guy is not highly saturated, prove our theorem there, and then pull it down to, to the reals. So that's a transfer principle. Now the ex koch principle is, so in the case of valued fields, it's a bit more complicated because we have these side conditions, value group and residue field. So that principle reads as follows. So we have the value groups are elementarily equivalent um, and the residue fields are elementarily equivalent. Then we should get that the fields themselves as valued fields are elementarily equivalent. So this holds for tame fields in the equal characteristic case, and again, X code and Yershov proved it in the mid 60s for Hanselian fields. of residue characteristic zero. So this result about tame fields can be sort of a generalization of their result. Now, unfortunately, so the tame fields, if you want to do good model theory about the perfect valued fields, you have to go to the tame fields. If you don't use that, then certain things will break down. And unfortunately, the guy we are so interested in, is not tame. Because it's not perfect. T doesn't have a piece root. So this guy is not perfect, cannot be tame. Um, so, big open problem. Are the elementary theories of the following decidable first okay we we'll ask about fpt with the theoretic valuation now, I should write here one possible approach. Uh, so what we currently do in valuation theory, we introduce new classes of valued fields and uh, investigate their properties. And there is a class that was introduced by Yershov. It's quite ingenious. It's a, it's a condition, it's an axiom, where you wonder why didn't the early valuation theorists not think about it, but I don't have time to write it down. This is class of extremal fields, extremal valued fields. Okay, so this guy is not perfect, make it perfect. Okay, now this is nice, it's perfect, but as we have seen in one of my examples, it's not defectless, so it's again not tame. But it is 
perfectoid. And here you may think of Scholz. Now, perfectoid fields are the basis for his perfectoid spaces. Yeah, so very nice. We can hook up to a winner of the Fields Medal. However, as a model theorists, you are quick to say no. Perfectoid cannot be excrementized first order. It's not elementary. But we don't want to work with that. Now, a better class, larger class, so better, is a larger class of so called deeply ramified fields. which are discussed in the book of Gaber and Ramero. With its funny title, Almost Ring Theory. And uh, so these are indeed elementary. And so this is a deeply ramified field. So the questions are now, questions for future research are, model theory, is there a good model theory for deeply ramified fields? And secondly, well, go back to the Hanselian rationality theorem the base field is tame. So what about generalizing to deeply ramified? Can the Hengelian rationality theorem and other tools that we used be generalized to deeply ramified fields? And, okay, why do I have a reason to be optimistic about that? And that is one of my last chapter, going back really again to our defects, classification of defects. And I told you already there's a classification into dependent, coming from purely inseparable uh, defect extensions and independent. And I showed you my second example, exactly the defect extension over this field, because that is perfect. There are no defect extensions purely inseparable, but still there is a defect extension and that is independent. Now, uh, this works in positive characteristic. It was originally formulated in positive characteristic by myself in 2010. Now you would like, because you also have defect extensions in mixed characteristic, where the characteristic of the field itself is zero, but then you can from purely inseparable defect extensions because there are no purely inseparable extensions. However, the characterization that I introduced uses a very different criterion and that can be generalized. And we did that on your blush chalk and myself in a preprint. Generalized to, to uh, to mix characteristic. Now what we prove in this preprint is that deeply ramified fields only admit independent defect extensions.
And why is that so interesting? Because we have a feeling that the independent effect extensions are much more harmless than the dependent one. And I give you one uh, indication for that. Okay, so what did Hagen, Knaf, and I do? We introduced a separable alteration. Now, Temkin, Michael Temkin, um, in a paper called Inseparable Local Uniformization, shows that the same thing can be done with purely inseparable. Yeah. You might wonder whether, okay, because these are disjoint, you can contract it to F, no alteration, no way. So I, I discussed this with Temkin, he says, no, nothing beyond that. The reason is that, okay, it's quite clear what we do with this extension, there is defect, and we store it away in this extension. Whereas, Michael is able to store it away into a purely inseparable extension, but that you can only do with a dependent one. Yeah? So he circumvents the dependent ones, and somehow he handles the independent ones. So this gives us an indication that the independent ones are better. So from there, I have this conject whoops, conjecture. The Henselian rationality theorem also holds over deeply ramified fields instead of tame fields. So we allow, we relax, we allow defects, but only the independent ones which seem to be uh, less harmful. Now there is a second uh, uh, indication, I want to pa uh, just mention it in passing because I'm out of time, there is an example given in a paper of Dale and Olivier Pelton, which is a tower of two Artin-Schreier defect extensions, uh, where strong monomerialization fails. Okay. But this one, we have an example which is the Delta that it will happen. Okay. Okay. But it is, it does so, it, it, in any case, it's a bad example. And then I asked them, uh, are these defects dependent or independent? And it was very, very difficult to do that uh, because my way of uh, classification is in a very different language. And uh, the conversion is very hard. But finally, Dale proved that these extensions, the defects, are dependent. So it seems you can do something very bad with the dependent, but hopefully not with the independent, and that's ongoing research now. <laughs>